Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video and today we are taking a look at the NECA 2020 convention exclusive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the Musical Mutagen Tour figures. Here we have the turtles on the front box and it's a really big box I couldn't even get it in one frame but we can see all the turtles there on the front. On the back you're going to see this really creepy cutout here of Raphael and then down near the bottom we get a set list which is pretty cool. And then this sleeve is going to come off and reveal on the inside. We see what appears to look like a stage case here that you usually see, you know, storing different uh, concert equipment. But if we open the flaps here, you can see the turtles are secured inside. So enough about that. Let's get this open and take a look here at the turtles. And here are the turtles outside of their packaging. And hats off to NECA for the level of dedication they have to the Ninja Turtle fans. I don't think I have ever seen a set of action figures that I would consider to be more fan service than this. To have a set of figures based off of a tour that was done at the height of the turtle popularity is... Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just total fan service. I, I really feel like only the most diehard Ninja Turtle fans really are getting this set for the love of the nostalgia of, of the Turtles. I personally am a huge Turtles fan. It was a very big part of my childhood as a child of the late 80s and early 90s. So Ninja Turtles were, I, they were very much a part of my childhood. But I did not go see this uh, coming out of their shells tour. I do remember seeing the VHS, and I remember seeing the advertisements for it. Uh, to me, it just, it, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't interested in it as a kid. At least I don't recall being interested in it. I didn't go see it, so there is that. But for NECA to make an entire set based out of one of the most obscure things in the Turtles history, I think is really, really cool. And, uh, you know, when I saw the set at Target, I picked it up. I'm actually going to review this, and then I got a buddy who wants the set, so I'm going to sell it off to him. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at it anyway, and I do think it is really cool. And, of course, what NECA set would be complete without a good set of accessories? And you can see here each of the turtles decked out with their instruments that they had from the tour, along with some extra hands and whatnot that we're going to look at here in a moment. But starting first here with Donatello and his instrument, he is going to have this keyboard here, which looks really well done. I mean, decent paint. And you can see match up the color scheme here so if you don't know who is playing what instrument they are going to be color coded and then out of the box each figure is going to have an appropriate set of hands on the figure already for playing their instrument so you can see here that Donnie has a pointing finger for hitting the keys but also it actually works really well to have him like pointing out to the crowd like I did in one of those 360 shots there then you have Raphael, who's going to have here, looks like just some sort of beat pad or something like that, I would assume. I, again, I didn't go see the tour, so, uh, but looks just like an electronic, you know, like I said, a beat pad. So pretty simple, nothing too crazy. And he is going to have these open hands with the fingers mostly together. You can't see there is a gap there, but you do get that. And then it was pointed out on another reviewer that... Uh, in the DVD, Raphael, or rather the VHS back in the day, Raphael also had an alternate, alternate instrument at one point with the saxophone, which is pretty well sculpted, and you do get some good paint details there on all the different brass pieces and things like that. So that is pretty cool. And then we do have Leonardo with what I'm assuming is maybe a bass, although it looks like it only has one string. But again, color-coded, so you see the blue there. And, I mean, not a whole lot going on with this, but like I said, I'm assuming that this is probably like a bass of some sort. And you can see he has these slightly open hands here, and this one just a little bit different. Yeah, this one's open a little bit further than that one, so you can get that uh, holding or looking like it's strumming. And then, in addition, we talked about the VHS. You do have this alternate little piece here. Because apparently on the VHS, Leo was seen having this almost, reminds me of like Kiss with the face makeup. So he has this little piece here that you can put on and take off so that you do have alternate versions there based on uh, you know what you enjoyed there as a kid. And then lastly, we have Mikey here with what uh, I would assume is the guitar. Uh, again, it's only three strings, but we can see again color coded there with the orange. And looks pretty good. And he's going to have these gripping hands here. So he can hold it right up here 
uh, at the neck without too much trouble. And this hand looks like he's actually, it'd be great if they had like a little pick or something even sculpted on there. Uh, but it looks like he is going to be uh, strumming that guitar. And much like Leo, we do have, where'd I put it? There it is. We do have the alternate accessory for Mikey, which is this little star that goes in his mask so that he can have that alternate set up as well. So I think that's really cool that NECA included that. Now, in addition to those, we do get this pizza, which is, I mean, it's a little bit bendy and, uh, I mean, not a whole lot of detail to it. I guess I'd have to see the show to remember whether or not they had a, a very prop looking piece of pizza or not. And then lastly, we do get a bunch of alternate hands here. However, there's not a whole lot different to them. So you're going to get a set, two sets, left and right, thumbs up hands. So you would technically have enough for each of the turtles to be given a thumbs up, just they'd have to be alternating hands. And then we get a full two sets each again of these open and finger apart hands, which I'm assuming maybe are high fives. So again, each turtle would have enough for one hand, just two of them would have left hands, two of them would have right hands. So pretty cool with the, uh, the extra accessories though. I like that we get a fair amount of them. Now in standing straight up, the turtles are going to come in at six and a half inches tall, which makes them about 16 and a half centimeters. And they are all the same body mold and heads and everything like that. So they're all going to be the same height. But since we already looked at all of their accessories, let's go ahead and jump in here and we're going to do some closer looks on the turtles in more detail. And getting up close here, we can see a really good looking head sculpt here by NECA. And I think they did a great job of capturing what it would look like for a human to be wearing a turtle mask. The sunken eyes are really the biggest giveaway here. And I think that is, yeah, just really creepy looking. Like, it definitely doesn't look like they were going for... Uh, you know, a realism thing in terms of like making it look like a real turtle, but instead a realism thing to what these looked like and how creepy they looked. And in fact, so all the heads are sculpted the same. So I checked all of them have this same like, I don't know, like crumpled grouping here. And I feel like that is NECA giving us some attention to detail because when you put it down, it kind of rests right there against the back of the jacket. And I'm wondering if that's meant to look like a, uh, you know, that this is a mask and that that is just some of the uh, flaps of the mask bunching up at the back of the helmet uh, or back of the mask, rather. So I think that is actually what that is. And I think that's really cool, uh, if, if I'm right, that NECA included that. But all the heads are going to be sculpted the same. At first, you might be inclined to look and see that, you know, this obviously looks like it's a glued on piece, but really it's an articulated piece on all of the heads so you can have them open their mouths which is really cool and we get some decent paintwork going on in there and of course each one like i said is sculpted all the same so speaking of which we'll just kind of look at some of the different features swapping the heads around uh, we do have the headset here which is going to be the same on all of the turtles that is fixed on there you cannot take that off the microphone is kind of placed in different spots i noticed on each one uh, Leo is being the furthest away from the mouth, and then we have Mikey's. So Mikey and Raph look like they're pretty good, but Leo and Donnie, not so much. So a little bit uh, of work necessary there, but really cool looking uh, sculpts there. I like that. Now looking at the rest of the figures. So again, these are all essentially identical, but each of them are going to have their own little insignias here on the jacket as well as across the belt and on the elbow and knee pads. So Donnie here has the yin yang pattern throughout. So we got the yin yang there across the belt here. We get it on the shoulder pads. He also has this little D here so again. On the back of them, we each or each of them have this uh, musical mutagen tour, which looks really cool. Then, of course, we get the names up here at the top. So we see Donatello's name there. And then going back down, we have, again, the Ying Yings. And then we see the leg warmers, which is a cloth piece. And I love the attention to detail here, giving them sneakers. And not just sneakers, but 
like human sized feet. Like these feet look like they're too small for the figure, which is appropriate because the actors, of course, were wearing sneakers running around on stage. And I think that is really cool that NECA included that as well. So really neat looking. Uh, looking though at the rest of the figure. Uh, so we have Raph here with the little X pattern throughout his. And then he's going to have the R down there. We get a little smiley face here. And then we see the X pattern again, his name in the top. And then going down, we see again the leg warmers, the shoes, and we get the X pattern on that. Then Mikey here is going to have the star. We get again on the chest. We get the little M there. He doesn't have anything. Yeah, no, I was going to say he doesn't have anything. I think Raph is the only one that has something else there. Uh, we get the mutagen tour again. Is there something in the middle of that star? No. Just a little black smudge. And then, of course, we see Mikey's name there. And on the knee pads. And on the knee pads again with the star. And the leg warmers and shoes. And then finally, we have Leo here who has this little moon shape. And oddly enough, though, he's the only one. We don't get that same shape on the shoulder, or rather on the elbow, or on the knee pads. Instead, we get these X's. So, uh, But we see we get the L there again. And, of course, Leonardo again. And then looking at the bodies on all of these, again, they are going to be the same, but you get some good painted details here. So you get a nice wash over it. We get some good uh, dark green here in the creases of the muscles and things like that. So it's really well done. But man, I just, I do, I really like the way these figures look. I think they're really cool. Now looking at the articulation, so again, they're all the same figure, so it's the same articulation. Head can go down quite a ways. It cannot go back, though, at all. You get a little bit of tilt in it, though, and of course you get some side-to-side -side action. And as I pointed out, you do have the articulation there in the jaw. And I forgot to mention, too, on the headpiece, you do have this wire coming off. Uh, I'm sure that's meant to be like an antenna for the headset, so uh, you can put those however you want. I just kind of draped them over their shoulder there. Uh, the arms are going to come up. Uh, boy, I feel like I'm forcing it if I go any further. So, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and we'll just stop right there. So not very far. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, I did notice, Leo, this elbow pad is, like, further down than any of the others. Uh, you can kind of see how it's not quite over the bicep, where on the other guys it is coming up over, just over the edge of the bicep, but on Leo... It's kind of below it, so uh, yeah. But you can see that you have some rotation there at the upper part of the elbow, and I think, yeah, you have it at the, the lower part as well. So that is going to be two different spots of rotation there. And then elbow articulation, it's about right there. You do have a hinge and swivel at the wrists, and then you are going to have on the inside of like underneath the shell here, you get a little bit of a wobble in the shoulders, so that's kind of cool. But we don't have any rotation or anything like that in the wrist, but you do get a little bit of that side-to-side -side action, as I mentioned. Legs kick forward. Eh. I don't. I feel like, again, I'm, I'm forcing it if I go too far. This is a soft material here, so there's no risk of like hurting anything. But it just yeah, it feels like it's not really going to go any further than that. Backwards, not really much at all. Legs can come apart, yeah, more than you need to, so that's good there. And you do have rotation there at the, uh, oh, man. You have rotation here at the top of that thigh or at the top of the, the hip there. You are going to have uh, knees joint there. I can't tell if it's double jointed. I assume it is. But it doesn't get very far, especially because it's scrunching on that piece there. So, yeah, you're not going to get a whole lot out of the knees. And then you do have a hinge and ankle pivot there on the ankle. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So overall, really cool figures. And again, just terrific fan service by NECA to produce these guys. Uh, however, I think this is targeted at a very specific uh, turtle fan. Uh, you know, Again, I'm a big turtle fan, and even I just... I think the figures are cool, but after messing around with them, I really wouldn't have any desire to keep them in my collection, especially at the price that they're going for, which is about $130. So the fact that these are really going to be, you know, display pieces uh, meant to be kind of just on their own, you know, these aren't going to be displayed with Shredder, these aren't going to be fighting or anything like that. So uh, they're really meant to be display pieces. 
Uh, I, I don't think that this would really be something I'd care to have in my collection. They're well done, and they're very cool, and again, a great fan nod. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that uh, that's going to be the case is you need to be a, a pretty big turtle fan to really have a desire for these figures at the price point that they are. And you know, with that being said, uh, I'm glad I got a chance to review them and take a look at them. Uh, but I have no problem selling this off to my buddy who uh, who I really this is I, I bought it for him. You know, I saw it out in the wild, asked him if he wanted it. He said yes. So I really picked it up for him. I told him I'm just going to do a review on it. So he's going to have to deal with him being open. Uh, but I'm going to sell it to him for a cheaper price than uh, what I even paid for him. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So cool set of figures. Well done, well sculpted and well executed. I just think it's a very slim target market. That's it. But anyway, if you like this review, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching my videos, and have a great day.